The Jehovah's Witnesses organization is facing scrutiny in Pennsylvania following allegations of widespread child sex abuse by its members. Earlier this year, we broke the story about a state grand jury's upcoming report on that topic. And now Fox 43's Harry Lee uncovers how the organization is responding to those allegations and the whistleblowers who helped bring the concerns to light. This is a serious issue for whistleblowers like Martin Hawk, who I met in May. He was so devoted to Jehovah's Witnesses that even after he walked in on another member sexually molesting his four-year-old daughter, he didn't go to police for another 11 years. Now that he's gone public with his story, Jehovah's Witnesses have labeled him an apostate and warned other members not to engage with him. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses are holding 6,000 conventions around the world this year with the theme Exercise Patience. Ahead of a three-week convention that began July 14th in Redding, Berks County, members providing security received an email with pictures of Martin and Jennifer Hawk. I learned that I was on a list, a watch list, by all the attendants or the security uh, br brothers who handled security at that convention not to be allowed into any building. The couple had spoken to Fox 43 earlier this year about their frustrations trying to get justice within Jehovah's Witnesses for their daughter's molestation in 2005. They eventually left and were disfellowshipped or shunned. The email warned that the Hawks, quote, are not one of us. This is really something that is not shocking to me because I've watched the organization for decades and dealt with them in court. According to Jehovah's Witnesses expert Rick Allen Ross, the email shows that the organization is responding defensively to whistleblowers and critical media coverage on their handling of child sex abuse. They basically go after these whistleblowers and can disfellowship them, shun them, and punish them for speaking out. Jehovah's Witnesses should be listening to them and, and in an effort to try and correct what's wrong and to deal with the situation of child sexual abuse within the organization. The email also claims the Hawks have tried to get into past conventions by, quote, mingling with the crowd upon entry, dressing and acting as if one of us. Martin Hawk says he did attend one protest outside the 2018 Reading Convention, but has never tried to enter under false pretenses. We got permission before we even went. Um, we, the police knew we were coming. The city of Reading knew we were coming. We were respectful. We didn't engage with any Jehovah's Witnesses. We didn't try to enter the building. He says the email shows who Jehovah's Witnesses are choosing to target. It really hurt me, you know, because again, it's, it's their convention. They can determine who can come and who cannot. But on the other hand, when I was an elder, I was not allowed to inform the members of the congregation that there was a known child abuser in the congregation. Jehovah's Witnesses responded to our questions about the email with this statement. Our congregants expect and value a peaceful learning environment at our conventions. To ensure the well-being of all who attend, we may at times revoke a person's privilege to attend our Bible education programs when we believe their goal is to disrupt our peaceful gatherings. The grand jury investigation is moving forward. This week, one of the 14 Jehovah's Witnesses that the Pennsylvania Attorney General charged for child sex abuse became the first to plead guilty. We, of course, will continue following this story and bring you updates on air and on Fox43.com. Harry Lee, Fox 43 News.